Hi everyone, so as some of you might know, I am a left-handed artist, and this um, doesn't, for me, like, this doesn't mean I'm left-handed for everything in my whole life. I'm actually, I, while well, I was doing some research about um, being left-handed and handedness um, and all that kind of stuff because I wanted to talk about it in this video, and I found out there's something called mixed-handedness, which would be what I am which means um, I'm not ambidextrous, like I can't use one hand for equally, like I can't use both hands equally for one task, but depending on the task, I switch my hands. So for writing and drawing and eating and brushing my teeth um, and doing like things that require like a lot of detail, I use my left hand. And then for sports and for throwing things and if I had to paint a wall with like a giant paintbrush, I would probably use my right hand. Um, like I'm talking like a paint roller, just like painting a room. My right arm is just a lot stronger than my left arm. I open doors with my right arm, um, everything like that. So for things that require like strength and like just like larger actions, I use my right hand and I can't, I can't throw with my left arm. Like I can't, but I can't, I can't write with my right hand, but I write with my left hand. So depending on the task, I kind of use different hands and I wanted to look up kind of like what this has to do with um, what mixed handedness um, has to do with like your brain or your personality or anything like that. I found this uh, website talking about it and it basically just says like um, different statistics, uh, different parts of the brain that are that are used more depending on what hand you use. Um, and it says that, uh, that people who are left handed or have mixed handedness have a thicker um, joining between the brains, the corpus callosum. So it says, only like some studies suggest uh, left-handers, mixed-handers have thicker and more developed corpus callosum. Um, I remember learning about that in psychology, which is basically means you have two um, hemispheres in your brain and the corpus callosum is what allows them to communicate between each other. Like some people with certain medical conditions, that can actually be um, detached um, and it can allow them, it kind of like messes with their hands and they can only do certain tasks with um, each hand it's very interesting and also an interesting thing about being mixed-handed um, it says that musicians um, who play like instruments that require two hands like wind instruments and string instruments are more likely to be mixed-handed or left-handed than the average person and I don't know if that contributed to my handedness at all because I only started playing I only started playing a uh, like an instrument the flute in grade well I started playing two-handed instrument in grade six but before that I already knew I was left-handed but I didn't necessarily know that I I couldn't throw with my left arm because I was in baseball and I had a left-handed glove which means I had it on my uh I had the glove on my right hand so that I could catch it with my right hand and then throw with my left hand and I also batted as a left-handed um as a left-handed person when I should have been using my right hand. I thought that was interesting, but I don't know when it was I discovered that I can't throw with my left arm. I have to throw with my right arm. Anyway, I just thought it would be interesting because a lot of people say that, I don't know, like people who are left-handed are more creative and there's a lot of artists that are left-handed and I don't exactly know why that is, but I, I don't know if it's a stereotype or an oversimplification. I think it is, but I'll link um, some sources I found if you want to read about it yourself. But the purpose of this video, I kind of went off on a tangent there, but the purpose of this video was to talk about struggles of being a left-handed writer, I mean a left-handed artist. So like writing specifically and what struggles uh, uh, happen in everyday life that actually bother me a lot. Um, and also some things people say are a struggle, but really they're not. Like, they are, but they're not. Like, for instance, the first one, spiral notebooks. Um, if you want to write on the front page of in a spiral notebook without flipping it and you're left-handed, it's really annoying because the spirals are digging into your hand and you can't rest it flat. But as soon as I'm able to flip the page and write on the back of it, it becomes so much easier. So my argument for that is that if you're right-handed, you start writing on the page and as soon as you have to flip it and write on the other side, then the rings start digging into your hand. So spirals, I think they kind of bother everyone, um, only if you have to write on the back of the page, because once you flip the page, then like you're writing on the front and the rings don't dig in. You flip it over and now the rings are digging in and uh, the other way around for left-handed people. So 
it depends if you use both sides of the page. If you do use both sides of pages, then you, like if you use both sides of the page in a sketchbook, then you're just gonna have to deal with the spirals because you're gonna, your hand's gonna encounter it one way or another, unless you like do all your drawings like upside down and like flip it according to where the spirals are or just put the spirals along the top. I think that might solve some problems. Just putting the spirals along the top, they won't bother, they won't bother anyone, but I've used spirals for my whole life and it's annoying, but I kind of got over it pretty quickly. I just kind of, it's just, I'm just so used to it now. It just doesn't bother me anymore. And I personally have never had a problem with scissors or using computer mouses, computer mice. I still don't know what the plural of that is. I think it's computer mouses. Um, but I actually use both of those with my right hand. I cut scissors with my right hand. Another thing I've noticed is when I am cutting a big piece of paper and I have to use a ruler and an X-Acto blade, I hold the ruler with my right hand and cut with my left hand. It might be different for other people, I don't know, but that's another way I do things. I brush my teeth with my left hand, I eat with my left hand. And another thing, I want to talk about smudging. So like when you're writing or drawing and it gets all over the side of your hand. Um, for, for, right, for left-handed people, the reason why this is such a bigger risk is because um, if you're using pen, mostly if you're using pen and you're writing, your hand immediately drags across the word right after you write it so it doesn't get a chance to dry. So I always get this like blue mark on my knuckle from, uh, or, or black mark or like whatever color of pen I'm using on the on my pinky finger from writing in pen. And if you're right-handed, the line you just wrote has a chance to dry before you move on to the next line. So you're less of a risk of smudging. But for doing actual artwork, I think both artists have an equal risk of smudging things because if you jump around the whole piece and like develop it all as a whole, your hand will touch every part of the piece and you just, it's a, it doesn't matter what hand you use because you're going to draw on both sides of the page no matter what, especially if it's a drawing. So, or I mean only if it's a drawing. If you're writing, it's a little bit different because you go in a very deliberate manner because it goes line by line. So if you're drawing, then smudging is kind of an equal risk for both. Unless, of course, you're using something that needs to dry and if your hand goes over it immediately, then you would smudge it. But if you, with your right hand, maybe it would have a time to dry. I don't know. And something that bothers me so much is if you're in a classroom or like a lecture hall or something, there's always those desks that, that flip up from the right hand side and has an armrest and then a place for you to write. And if you're left-handed, this is like the most uncomfortable thing in the world. I had to write an exam once in a right-handed desk and I like my back was so sore at the end of it because there weren't any right-handed desks. I mean, there weren't any left-handed desks. So you're basically forced to like lean over, you don't have an armrest and you just have to like curve your whole body to account for this horrible, horrible design for left-handed people. But most of the struggles that left-handed people go through in everyday life, I find don't apply to me because everyday things, I think I use my right hand more, like opening doors and like turning on taps or whatever, like I don't know which hand is more um, dominant for certain tasks, but... I'm also right-footed. I don't think I'm left-footed for anything. Maybe for more like accurate things. Like if, if I was, if I were to try to draw something with, with my feet, like which foot would I use? I don't know. <laughs> Do I find it easier to pick things up with my left foot or my right foot? I don't know, but I definitely can't kick a ball with my left foot. I mean, I could, but my right foot, it just feels more, it feels proper. And if I'm gonna jump, um, my right foot has to like, has to, um, like be the one to push off the ground. And does crossing your legs have to do with which um, hand you use or which leg is your dominant one? Because I find I cross my left leg over my right leg more often than the other way around. And sitting, sitting cross-legged and like if you like intertwine your hands, doesn't matter which, which hand you are because I can only do it one way. Like when you interlock your fingers together, only one way feels right and the other way feels so unnatural. My left thumb is on top when I cross, when I like put my, clasp my hands together. When I clasp my hands together, my left thumb is on the top. So does that have to do with it? I don't know. But another thing about being left-handed is you always notice other people who are left-handed or you kind of, once you make yourself aware of it, it's easy to notice. I always try to make a point just to like see who's left-handed. And another annoying thing is when you're sitting beside someone who's right-handed, you kind of annoy them because 
like people are used to having a right-handed person beside them so your elbows aren't hitting each other when you're eating or drawing or writing but if you're sitting beside a right-handed person and you're sitting on their right side then your arm will get in the way of their elbow so I don't know that those are my opinions about being left-handed just some like fun facts I guess uh, I just wanted to talk about this because I got a lot of comments that are like are you left-handed which I mean can you see me using my left hand in the video? <laughs> I guess maybe some people think that the video might be flipped or something, but I am left-handed. And let me know what your, like, are you right-handed? Are you mixed hands? Are you left-handed or are you amb ambidextrous? Because I think being ambidextrous would be the coolest thing in the world, but I'm not that. So I hope you found this video kind of interesting. Um, I hope you learned something and I will see you in my next video.